Hey guys, Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV and yes, the first ever online only WWDC 2020 has just ended and here's everything that you need to know and what is my honest feedback on these brand new updates, so keep watching. Now first is the upcoming release of iOS 14. Now Apple has finally introduced App Library, which is like App Drawer, which arranges apps according to its categories like suggested apps, recently added, social and many more. And on top, there's also a search bar which you can search each apps by letters. Next there is widgets, where there are widgets like calendars, time, music and of course some supported apps now on the iOS platform and then there's also picture in picture which is similar to YouTube premium or free APK apps like YouTube Vents where you have a floating video and browsing on the phone however I'm eager to know whether or not this works on apps like Netflix but guys doesn't all of this sound very familiar have you already seen a particular OS which already has these features for eons you know, those green robot looking icon ones. Hmm? I mean, I understand that Apple wants to wait when it comes to innovative features, but this took them about 14 iterations to actually come up with these features. So, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Next, Siri has a new animated features instead of covering the whole screen, it has an animation below and the notifications and the answers comes on top of the screen which was very nice. Then looking at the apps, Apple introduced some new apps like Translate which works exactly like Google Translate, so yes. Then the Messages apps also has an upgrade too which I'm curious to find out whether or not people here in Malaysia still uses that app since we already have WhatsApp. Let me know at the comment section below where the Messages app right now has new features like pinned conversations, inline replies, mentions where you'll only be replied when you're mentioned within the group conversations. Then there's the updated library of Memojis with face covers, <laughs> yeah, fist bumps and even blush as well. Okay. Then there's updated maps which has more countries which again there's other apps which already have this. Now the dedicated cycling route was great but it's only available for certain cities only so let's hope for more cities on this integration although I don't ride a bicycle but this could be very beneficial for those cyclists out there. But what I really loved is the EV routing because as a hybrid car driver myself, it's nice to know the exact route which has EV charging points so I don't have to use a separate app for that, so good job Apple. Then there's also app guides which is very similar to Google Trips but unfortunately it is gone. So rest in peace Google Trips. Which I find it a very good feature or an app for you guys to use if you guys are constantly traveling. Then there's also the updated Apple CarPlay which allows further customizations for the wallpapers and looks. And apparently you can do this for certain supported car models. Now you can leave your keys at home and unlock and start your car with your iPhone. It uses NFC and you just tap to unlock. Innovative but uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Next day is App Clips which is like a QR scanner which is called the App Clip Code which is a bit more catered to the iOS devices which can be connected directly to your Apple Pay. Now looking at the iPad OS which I've always preferred compared to iOS, there's sidebars and toolbars for all their supported apps. There's also a new search bar which is very similar to Mac OS which you can search for anything anywhere on the screen which was very nice. Then there's Scribble which converts handwriting to text automatically which is something that Samsung had for many years on their tablets but as we all know how it goes with Apple, better late than never. So one of my favorite updates is the software updates for the AirPods. Now if you missed my video review on the AirPods Pro, I will leave a card above. 
and also at the description below. And what's new is the fact that it has the automatic switching which allows you to switch between your devices that you're listening it without you manually doing so. Now this is no regular automatic switch. For example, if you're listening to music or a podcast on your iPhone, you put the iPhone down and then you pick your iPad up. If you're planning to watch a movie, it will switch the audio source to the iPad automatically and then suddenly you get a video call on your Mac it will switch over to that and if you get a phone call between that it will connect it to your iPhone instead now that is a really great feature then there's also spatial audio which is very similar to my recently reviewed Sony WI-1000XM2 neckband so again that is nothing new there now when it comes to the Apple Watch, I have to admit that I've never used an Apple Watch before as my daily smartwatch but there are some updates for it where first there are new updated watch faces where you can also edit those watch faces accordingly and with the introduction of face sharing not sharing your face but sharing the watch face where you can have other users to share their customized watch faces which is also kind of nice and for those of you who use the Apple Watch for working out, the app has now changed from activity to fitness where there is added training modes like dance. So yes, you can track your calories when playing games like just dance. No, I don't play it. Then there's also core training, functional strength training and cool down as well. And sleep tracking has finally been added which I totally did not know that Apple Watch did not have this feature all this while because there are tons of other smartwatches, especially for my recently reviewed Realme Watch, which costs only 299 ringgit, which can do the sleep tracking and the other exercise features. But I'm really eager to test out these features properly on the Apple Watch to see if it really does work. And again, I don't play just dance. Just saying. Oh, but I find it very thoughtful for Apple to include this automatic detection when you are washing your hands where there is a timer that will beep to make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly during a set time. Now, as for their security enhancements when it comes to the software, Apple has strengthened those areas more, which is the obvious and the best thing to do from a software perspective. And they have always been great about that, so I won't go further into those tiny little details. Then as for the TV OS, to me, there was only some little updates for the smart home integration with HomeKit to view your camera footages or even control some of the smart home devices which brands like LG and Samsung has already implemented quite a while back. Next, let's look at my ultimate favourite thing about Apple which is the brand new Mac OS. So the Mac OS 11 is now called Mac OS Big Sur. Yes sir. <laughs> What's with the name lah? Yes sir, big sir. <laughs> Anyways, name aside, now the interface at the dock area is more squarish compared to the circular ones on the current Mac OS Catalina and also a new look for the Finder, Mails and the Photo apps as well. Then there's also the Control Center which is very similar to iOS and also iPad OS where there's a menu system to easily toggle the settings, adjust the display, sound and music options which I humbly feel it makes more sense for a touchscreen devices so maybe Apple is finally looking to come up with a touchscreen Mac. Hmm? Hopefully. Then there's also a new notification center which I don't really use anyway for my Mac. And last but certainly not least is the biggest announcement and this is really big is the fact that Apple is now taking a huge and big innovative step by creating their own Apple Silicon SoC instead of using Intel. Now this had some mixed feelings for some people but for me, I love that idea because the Apple Bionic chipset used for the iPhones and the iPad is an amazing chipset although it is not 5G capable like the Kirin processors but from a performance point of view, I think that this will make Apple's Mac system to have a huge potential going over super crazy speeds like how the iPad has and there's also better integration with Microsoft Office softwares which again, I prefer Apple softwares like Apple's Keynote, Numbers compared to PowerPoint and even Excel as well but this will surely benefit for those of you who uses the softwares. Then from a creative standpoint, there are better integration with the Adobe Suite 
And since I'm a heavy Final Cut Pro 10 user, there are some huge updates that will also include putting the titles and transitions while the video is being played, which during my first impressions look pretty cool. So yes, I am really excited for that features. And from a business point of view, this will totally eliminate those Hackintosh users or Hackintosh builds in the future. So yes, coming soon, you'll have to say bye-bye to Hackintosh. So that's the overall highlights and everything that you need to know about the Apple's WWDC 2020. Now usually during the WWDC, although it is software based, there might be a couple of hardware announcements, but this year there isn't. But do let me know which updates that has been just announced by Apple excites you the most at the comment section below. Now if you'd like to see the full video of the whole keynote, I'll leave a link at the description below. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, be sure to give me one of these. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you haven't done so. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll catch you guys in my next video.